Uh, next guest on the show brought to you by folks at Skosh. Uh, he is the team manager of the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna team. For now, uh, announced this week that he is going to uh, be stepping back at the end of uh, this month at some point. But he's been on the team for a number of years, whether it's uh, a mechanic, whether it's a crew chief or team manager. It's Steve Westfall. What's up, Scuba? How are you, man? Good. How are we doing? I'm good. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Big sh- a little trying sh- to figure out why it's taken 20 years for you to have me on here. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I deserve that. I don't have a comeback for that. I deserve that. Um, I mean, yeah. Shit. Yep. Uh, hey, listen. You well, just got to quit every week. Yeah, you know, you, well, listen, you made big news. <laughs> no uh, kidding. You made big news in industry. You've been with the team forever. You've had a, a real successful run of championships and race wins over there. And you be promoted yourself, uh, got promoted uh, to team manager a little while ago. And now yep. it announced you're leaving. Um I guess take us through this decision. I was a mechanic for 12 years. I certainly can understand the workload and, and everything else. But, man, things are rolling for you professionally-wise. What, what made this uh, decision uh, for you to do? Uh, it was probably one of the toughest decisions I've ever had to make, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Um, just family. You know, I've always put everything else first, and my kids getting older and stuff. I just – it's a lot of stress on myself, and, you know, I just – wasn't fair to everybody around and involved mm-hmm. and um i just this is this is the this is what i chose you know i'm you know i'm still going to help the team you know probably for the first month or so mm-hmm. you know help that transition over and um you know still be there and still support the guys as much as i can right you know, i'm just always a phone call away at the end of the day so um yeah it was hard but i, um, I bet I just, you know, I love the industry. You know, I love, you know, we all started it at one point or another because we rode and raced and I just, it's hard. Right. It's the hardest, you know. Um, I'm, I'm interested yeah. in the timing of it though. So like, obviously, you know, you ended the season last year and then, you know, this is fairly recent. Were you like kind of burn out at the nationals but then things got better and then you got into the grind and then you're like i i really gotta leave i gotta do this like it is a sudden but you know a couple weeks before the first race or whatever um were you trying to be like i think i can do it i think i can do it and then like ah no i can't or were you close to doing it in september uh no i honestly just I mean, exactly what you said. I mean, I was trying to work through it, mm-hmm. and uh, my anxiety, I got bad anxiety, it's high. Yep. And I was trying to get through it, and I just couldn't. I, I was trying, and then just, it's not fair to everybody else involved, honestly. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to do, I know the timing isn't perfect, but timing's never perfect in racing. No. Nope. You know? No. Nope. Um, and that's why I'm, you know, trying to, in my mind, you know, do the right thing and still try to help this transition, if that makes sense. No, it does, for sure. You know, I, I've told this story on the show before, but I was a mechanic for 12 years, and in 05, I was getting a little over it, and I wasn't enjoying myself as much, and I couldn't believe I was a factory Yamaha mechanic and not that happy. My bike broke at Southwick. It wasn't my fault, but it was a, an ignition wire broke. There was too much tension on it between the coil and the uh, coil on the frame and the spark plug wire. And yeah. it was something I probably should have caught, like if I really looked at it. But, you know, just in the course of our moto, the thing just pulled apart a little bit. Anyways, long story short, like I got to my bike at the end of the second moto. Red Dog was third or something fourth. He was doing well. Bike quit. And Scuba right there, I said, I can't do this anymore. Like I, I feel so bad for Timmy. It really wasn't my fault, but it kind of always is when your bike breaks. It's always your fault at the end of the day. And I had yeah. so much anxiety and so much like um, nerves and so much pressure and stress. At Southwick in 05, Scuba, I said, I'm done and, at the end of the year. And I, and I certainly was. And I never was. Was there a moment for you like that? Did something, did something hit you at the shop or at the test track and you're like, yeah, it's time. Anything like that? No, it just, I was honestly trying to work through it. And, yep. and when, and I just, you know, it, like I said, it just wasn't yep. fair to everybody else involved. And I just, you know, I know the time, like I said, you know, I know the timing wasn't right by any means, but yeah, I mean, the over, the overwhelming stuff that, you know, from Instagram and Facebook and the messages was blown away. 
I know I can be an asshole and a dickhead. <laughs> Lindsay will attest to that one. Um, yeah, you kicked him out of the truck one time, right? I deserved it. Damn yeah, right, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, beat it, Lindsay. Um, but yeah, a lot of passion for it. But and I, you know, and you know, when you kind of lose it a little, and you're uh-huh. not sure, and you're trying to find it, and you know, it. It, trust me, it was hard because I had to call everybody. I bet. Well, you know, yeah. I was about to say that for you guys is, you know, it's, I, you talk about your family. Your team is definitely your second family, especially when I look at your guys' crew. You guys, I remember riding it for an Arcos offseason. You know, there's a lot of teams with a lot of staff turnover. You guys have very little. You, you guys have a real tight-knit group from the outside looking in. A lot of riders stay around mm-hmm. at the same time, so I can't imagine any of those calls are easy when you've worked that long with so many of those guys. No, not not at all. I mean, I broke down. I ain't gonna lie, mm-hmm. you know, because that's the hardest thing when you got to tell those guys, and um, you know, and then trying to tell the riders and stuff. The older ones kind of understood. They mm-hmm. weren't obviously, you know, they're bummed. Um, the older ones understood the most. The younger ones, it's hard when a few of them are like your kids. Yeah. I guess probably yeah. not the right thing to say with all of them that we have, but a couple <laughs> of them are like my kids. Yeah, Jalik being one. Um, cause he's been with me eight years now, going on eight years, seven yeah. years, eight years, long time. And obviously Timmy, you know, yeah, with Evan, you know, Evan, I've known Evan since he was a little, you know, little yeah. kid. Yeah. Watching yeah. him ride. Bobby started helping him a long time ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah. you would have been there the whole time. Um, yeah. Uh, exactly. So, yeah, that's tough, man. But yeah, like, again, like the timing's not great, but like you said, if it's, if it's not in your heart and you're, and you're, you're getting anxiety and all that, man, you know, you mm-hmm. got to look after yourself. You really yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And you know, kids are getting older now and stuff like that. So we're going to, we're going to move back East and you know, Oh, that was my next question. Yeah. So you're going to go back, back New York. No, I'm going to go oh. like, to the Florida area. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Roughly. Yep. Um, haven't quite figured it out. I had a, you know, buddy of ours that uh, we he passed away this past year or whatever. Mm-hmm. And his wife and they have a couple kids and whatnot. And um, maybe head that way, which they live in Georgia. And then Florida. I mean, I've gotten phone calls for jobs already, but I just, I don't want to commit to anything. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, no. You I, just I don't, you know. You don't know, and I don't know. We'll, we'll see. You know, I never – I don't think – I don't know if I've told this story before, but, like, at, speaking of my last year of mechanicking, so every time I drank something super hot or super cold, I had a stomach pain. Yeah. And and I went to uh, – uh, what do they call the – when they put the stuff on your stomach and uh, – ultrasound, I had an ultrasound. Yeah. They knocked yeah. me out and put a camera down my throat. Mm-hmm. They gave me an ultrasound. I took some pills. Nothing could get this thing solved. Nobody, none of the doctors knew what was going on. It was either hot or cold. Dude, I stopped being a mechanic, went away. Hey, Never hey. had it again. Anxiety. That's a true story. Anxiety is mm-hmm. a bitch. Yes, yes. I was, I was physically affected by my job, you know, um, scuba. So, yeah, I, I get it, man. You know, when you say you have yeah. anxiety, I can feel it. Like, you have this crew underneath you. You have these riders. It's not an overstatement to say you have their lives in your hand. You know what I mean? Um, you do. And, and, and I mean, yeah, it's a lot, it's so much work and so much uh, stress that people don't understand that mm-hmm. it is a great job. You get yeah. paid well and, and you get to be with the coolest fucking things, but sometimes man, and it just, it just ain't worth it. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's, yeah, I don't know. It's so hard. What did know? Roger and Ian <laughs> say? How did Roger and Ian take it? Would they try to talk you out of it? Did they say, give it a day or think uh, about it? Like, well, how were they? Uh, Everybody was caught off guard with it. Yeah. Um, which obviously the whole industry was. Um, they understood, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, with just the way that the living in here is in California and stuff. Obviously, being New York isn't much greater, but um, <laughs> I mean, just being on the, you know, it's just the cost of living is just through the roof, and it just keeps going up. And yep. You know, my wife. You know, she stays home, you know, to take care of the kids and stuff. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's hard, you know? So. Yeah. 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 Um, so you're going to work with the team. You're going to manage it and then find a successor uh, this yeah. month. Yeah. Mur- is yep. Murph going to yeah. step up to that or you guys sure? No um, 
you know, talked about it a little bit. Not 100% sure how that's going to work. Um, but, I mean, I think Murph would be really good at it. I mean, I love Murph, honestly. He's a good dude. And, um, I, you know, I, I think he deserves it, yeah. honestly. Um, he's, I mean, shit, he's one of my good friends. I mean, shit, we've worked together seven years probably. Um, yeah, cause and I, he's awesome. Because I, I always think of the fan thing, like when okay, so like Kehoe steps out, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was obvious, but I remember the moment somebody Han told me his out, I was like, "It's gonna be Lars." Like I think right. of these groups again as families. Like, yes, you could find somebody experiencing outside in, but again, what I said earlier, I feel like you guys have had such a solid group for so long. Not to say somebody else couldn't come in and lead them well, but if you've got a person yeah. that's got those relationships, man, it's hard to. Yeah, hard. Everybody trust him. Yep. Like, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. naturally right. It's yeah. natural. Um, Scuba. Also, too. Um, if and this is a hard question, but you know things have changed since Bobby owned the team, right? And and Husqvarna took over, and the, and it's more. It's probably been a bit more stress. You've seen it because you weren't a factory. You weren't a, the manager then when Bobby was there, but you were uh, crew chief, I believe, or maybe you were manager yep. when Bobby was there. I, I don't remember the timeline exactly. But anyways, if Bobby's still the owner and still run that way, are you still there, or is that impossible to answer? Or did things change with uh, you know it, Austria getting more involved? No, I wouldn't say things changed. No, you know, no. I mean, it was. It was the same. Right, right. You okay, know, not, either I way. I say yeah. it changed. Right. Yeah. Right. No, it didn't, it didn't change. Right, right. I was wondering if the workload increased or the stress got higher or whatever. You know what I mean? So. Um, no. Yep. No, because – no, I would say no. Um, and also, like, you know, again, like, um, you know, you guys had uh, – it wasn't a big – it wasn't really known behind the scenes, but there were issues with ignitions and, and riders and bikes and – Dude, I've been there. Our carburetors were falling off at Yamaha. Our, our, our fucking carburetors were falling off. And I can remember shit. the feeling in my stomach sometimes when, when shit went wrong in the test track for Chad, for Timmy, for Villeman. And you're just like, oh, my God, you feel – it's just the worst feeling in the world, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's gnarly. I mean, yeah, you, you, know, just, you just can't we, sleep. Like, you literally yeah. can't sleep. No, cannot. Cannot sleep. Nope. Don't understand why. Can't figure it out. Right. Doesn't. You right. know what I mean? Like it's yeah. it's crazy. Shit. I remember back to the Yamaha thing. I yeah. was working for Cunningham. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when he was on the Yamaha, and I remember racing at Glen Helen, and um, uh, all of a sudden he's pushing his bike, and I'm like, Yeah. What the hell? Right. And then Frenchie comes up, and he's like, Well, you didn't wire the. <laughs> carb on i'm like wire the carb what are you talking about <laughs> wire, yeah, wire the carb, wire the the carb on and i'm like what he's like i told you i'm like you never told me because yeah. i promised that yeah. thing would have been wired on yeah that's what i want to do is push a bike off the track yeah yeah the last yeah. thing yeah you know? no and this is the stuff that you lay there at night and you're like i cannot believe this happened i'm lucky my rider didn't yeah. die i'm lucky he didn't break it you know and sometimes they do get hurt really seriously timmy Timmy, uh, before I got there, carb came off, sent him to the hospital, you know, bruised lungs, uh, all that stuff. Um, and, mm-hmm. I, and, I, you know, I can't even imagine the feeling that everybody had. And it's just like, oh, my God, it's, it's a great job. The th- it's like a roller coaster. Like, the highs are so high. You know, Jason Anderson yeah, winning yeah. the championship, Zach Osborne, all the success, everything else. The highs are so high, like, no drug can beat it. But then the lows are just, you know, like we said, you can't sleep at night. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. The crazy part is, too, yeah. is you can have high and low in the same weekend. Yeah, yeah, things. 100%, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh my God. Especially when you got both classes covered. Oh, You my could gosh. go in and you could have a guy in the 250 class do well, and then next thing you know, the 50, 450 class just falls apart. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. Like, well, right. there goes that. <laughs> then, one right. moto, great. Next moto, right. you're walking back right. to the truck wondering what happened to Dude, everything. RJ's chain at, at high point. You're like, Dude, really? Like, really? I, you know. I could have. Bit fucking nails. I was so pissed. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I could not believe. Like, I'm like, my guys are one and two. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. Yeah. How awesome is this? Yeah. And then I hear somebody say something on the headset, and I was like, who? <laughs> and then they said it again, and I'm like, wait a minute. What yeah. did you just say? Yeah. What race did you guys have that happen at? High point. Oh, it was high, high point. point. Okay. I was, I was trying to remember mm-hmm. who else had Millville with like, uh, there okay. were, the, the, I don't know what's I going on with the chain industry, but all brands of chains were breaking last year. We went through two at Millville. That Dude, was like my. It was insane the amount of chains that were breaking, and these are expensive <sighs> chains. It's not like Scoop was putting on, you know, yeah. a twenty nine ninety five RK or something. Yeah. You know, I mean, these are 
high like quality chains. Not, yeah, yeah, I mean, they're <laughs> <laughs> new ones every it, weekend. Yeah, yes. it's not like it was the Master Link. No, you know what I'm saying, or yeah. the Clip, or right. a Rivet. Yeah. You know, ri- whatever. I mean, it just broke at the yep. like in the weirdest spot. Yep. Yeah. Um, never so, would have thought. So do you think you may, like you talked about getting some job offers and you're going to take your time and you're going to sort through it. And I understand mm-hmm. that. Do you think you'll be back in the sport on a lesser team, lesser role and a little bit less stress? Or do you see yourself kind of not going to supercross and motocross races for a while? Mm, I'd say probably not going for a while. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. There's, there's a couple of things I can't, you know, really, they're kind of up in the air, okay. I guess you could say. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know, right. but um, I don't know. We'll see, yeah. you know. We'll, hey, we'll see what happens. Good time to sell your house right I'm now. I'm definitely Mark, not Mark. going to Star. <laughs> <laughs> because I have seen the post and everybody thinking I'm going there and yeah. Star's hiring everybody. I'm not, you know uh, what I'm saying, like – I, I heard triumph. To, I was my oh, go-to. Oh, that was you said no. that on the forum. I, I I said it was a half-assed guess. But. Someone on <laughs> text like, message. Really? Someone on text message <laughs> said I heard he's going to triumph, and I don't know you very well, Scuba. So I'm like, I don't know. Like maybe I have no idea. But yeah, that was that was a text message I got. I, so. I made a joke. That's I said if he, if yeah. he my joke was I did say I said this is a guess, but if he says Georgia, I'm saying triumph. Okay, which he did again. Which I'm right, just right. once again joking. Uh Listen, uh, Star could use you. They're going through a lot of guys right now, Scuba. So uh, that's what I heard. But, oh yeah. my God. Um, but yeah, yeah, I just need to take time to sure. like really, you know, think it through. I yeah. mean, I love the sport. How, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Hey, yeah, Scuba. How? So. I was trying to think back timeline wise. How long were you at what was basically you know Hewitt Rockstar Race? That the organization you're with. How long were you there total? From 08, 2008. The September of 08. Okay, so back Canada Until, when it became Canada yep. Cowie. When it was Canada Cowie. Oh my God, were you the test track when Phil did his uh, <laughs> ca- his, his, his somersault? No, that Fuck. was right before. But okay, dude, that was when his motorsport Cowie. God, he is such an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Phil he, said he, you were gonna say that. <laughs> Phil said that he wanted to come on, but he would be asleep. But.